Students from asylum seeker backgrounds overcome so many barriers just to get scholarships to university and to complete their studies. They have to work hard to support themselves. Well, I see that they're fiercely independent, committed. They're very driven by their wish to succeed and progress in their education. Some of these young people were students of mine in secondary school. Two years ago, we formed the Hope Cooperative. They own it and they run it. It's a network of care and community that they're engaged in that allows them to connect with one another and feel supported beyond their learning at university. The great thing is it's been very much a partnership and I think people get the concept of a cooperative um, working together. It's been amazing to see the skills that asylum seekers that we have in the organisation have. They're not seeking a handout as such, that they're actively involved in that running and that's, that's a huge difference in terms of the confidence that brings them. It gives them an opportunity to be in control of the organisation, so we're trying to give people control back to their lives. Even before the COVID-19 crisis, asylum seekers were not entitled to any social security benefits, um, so they were entirely dependent on having a job. During COVID-19, of course, there's been a massive decline in employment. Although most Hope Co-op members have been in Australia for seven years, they have been completely excluded from JobKeeper and JobSeeker. There's a lot of weight put on these young individuals, as well as trying to cope with learning, they're trying to cope with how to bring food home or to help their families. However, these young people are very practised at living with uncertainty. Many have experienced prolonged immigration detention, they've learnt to be resilient and they want to contribute to the community. West Melbourne Baptist Church donated a shop front and from there our members have been delivering weekly food supplies to 65 other asylum seekers. It's a fair amount of food for one week, so at least they can have something to eat. They can go to bed without starving. At least they will have something to cook and share with their family and even help to their neighbours as well. The food we send out comes from a range of sources, Project Dignity, Hotham Mission and Flemington People's Pantry. Plus we do a weekly shop using funds from private donors. The difference it's made to these students, I think it's a sense of not having to explain again to a charity organisation or another um, bureaucracy that you need help. And I think for Hope Co-op to, to come to people's door and deliver food without question, delivered by our student, by VU students, who often speak the same language as that student is just you know something that um, is really so so appreciated by these students I hear it in their voices on the phone you know it's an act of kindness and empathy that is um, is something they don't expect and maybe have not experienced in a very very long time Right now, there are many more asylum seeker students in Melbourne at real risk. If this crisis destroys their studies, it will throw away universities' investment in them and be a huge waste of talent. 